In the past, many people have asked me what is the rarest thing in your collection? And to be honest, that's a really tricky question to answer, as it depends on how you gauge rarity. I have items that are worth a lot of money, sure, but if I was to pick the rarest stuff I own, it would have to be my prototypes. Over the past few years of my time collecting, I've been lucky enough to score a number of early test shots, samples, and prototypes from various merchandise lines I collect for. I've covered some of these on my channel before, such as the unreleased Big the Cat plush by Jazzwares, and the Sonic the Werehog plush by Kelly Toy, both of which were never before seen in full prior to me finding them. These two are very special to me. As far as I know, I'm the only person in the world who publicly owns them. Both of them were found in Chinese factory wholesale listings, and are likely to be some of the last remaining samples of them out there. And that's what makes prototypes so important to me. See, I'm undoubtedly up there with the coolest people alive, because I care a lot about the history of toys and merchandise. Practically every video on my channel is just as much about the history and context of the items as they are about actually reviewing the items themselves. I love researching the release windows, the companies, how these were made, and whether or not there's more to these merchandise lines than many realize. With any toy line, there will always be plans that fall through. There will always be items that change during production or simply never get released. This makes the existing samples of these early unseen items incredibly important, but unfortunately, very few people seem to make an effort to preserve them. Sometimes, a prototype is very similar to the released item, perhaps only being of slightly higher quality or made of different materials, but other times they are completely different, and sometimes there are of items that never get released at all. Think of prototypes as the toy equivalent of video game betas or work in progress cuts of films. They often have notable differences compared to the final release, and sometimes are of items that just never came out. And given my love for the history of this stuff, I've taken it upon myself to seek out these prototypes and factory samples, and miraculously, I've been given the opportunity to find and own many of them. In this video, I'll be going over many of the prototypes in my collection and the stories surrounding them. From Mario to Sonic to Jimmy Neutron, my prototypes are some of my favorite items I own, and I'm so excited to tell you all about them. This is the mysterious world of prototype merchandise. Let's begin. The series that I collect the most for has to be Sonic the Hedgehog, and as such, it's the series I own the most prototypes of. I've already made videos on some of these, but there are many more I have yet to share. Now, the Jazzwares Sonic line was full of unreleased and scrapped plans. Everyone knows about how Jazzwares claimed for years they were hard at work on 3-inch figures of Rouge the Bat and Classic Knuckles, yet neither were ever released. Because of the sheer amount of unreleased Jazzwares Sonic products, I decided to contact the head figure of the line, Joe Amaro, and ask him why the line went the way it did. He told told me all about how the line came to be and offered some answers on why things like 3-inch Rouge never materialized. He said Rouge only made it to design, nothing was ever sculpted, so unfortunately no mythical 3-inch Rouge the Bat prototype figure exists in the Jazzwares archives. Well that was a little disappointing to hear, I did ask Joe if he had any leftovers from his time working at Jazzwares. See, Joe left Jazzwares in 2011, which made him a perfect candidate for someone who would not only have cool stuff, but also someone who could share that work with the world. When you're still working at a company, it's likely there are some internal rules that not only hold back the distribution of prototypes, but even simply info on them being released. Since Joe no longer worked there, he was able to share quite a lot. He said he didn't have a ton of Sonic stuff left, but that he did have some things in his storage. The one that really caught my attention was this. He had a non-colored or purple tinted 3-inch Espio, which was produced to test out if they could manufacture translucent figures. He told me he'd get back to me if he ever found it in his storage, and thankfully, he did. Originally, he was going to sell it on eBay, but I offered to buy it and he sold it to me for an incredible, generously low price price, and now I'm the proud owner of this prototype 3-inch Espio. He's the exact same as the released clear Espio, only without the purple tint, which is honestly a much more faithful replica of Espio's abilities. According to Joe, it was Sega's decision to give the final figure its purple tint. I have no idea why, as this is a much more aesthetically pleasing figure without the jarring color. This prototype is so cool to me not only because we had never seen it before prior to Joe selling it to me, but also because it gives insight into the Jazzwares Sonic line's history. Clear Blue Sonic was released at the beginning of the line, but according to Joe, this figure was made to test out clear figures, implying that Espio was already sculpted well before the line even launched. I also love how the figure has noticeable imperfections such as these air bubbles. This truly is a one-of-a-kind piece, and yes, I do believe this was the only one ever made. As a form of authentication, I asked Joe if he had any Jazzwares Sonic print materials he could sign and include with the figure, and while he didn't have any on him, he did send me some digital copies of some materials he produced for the line. I picked this one out and he printed it and signed it, and now since the Jazzwares Sonic line means so much to me, this is one of my favorite pieces in my collection. I am incredibly honored to own this guy and do not worry, I'll make sure this figure remains safe for years to come.
we're not done with Sonic just yet. In 2014, Tomy became the official master toy partners for the Sonic brand. This was the first Sonic line I was actively tracking since the beginning. I distinctly remember analyzing every picture from every toy fair, from their early days making Sonic Boom products, all the way to the end with their 2018 offerings. The Tomy Sonic line will likely always remain the Sonic line I was most active with throughout its release. But the thing that cements this line in my mind as one of my favorite Sonic toy lines of all time is the amount of leaks and prototypes that surfaced throughout its production. Many of these were kept pretty underground during the line's run, but it's about time I talk about them. These Tomy Sonic leaks honestly deserve their own video someday, but I'll briefly go over most of them here. I didn't really get into searching for prototypes until around 2016, and what a time to get into it that was, because that's exactly when a ton of Tomy leaks popped up online. See, by late 2016, Sonic Boom was winding down, and Tomy had already released their classic styled 25th anniversary Sonic products. After these were released, many people suspected that in 2017, Tomy would break away from Sonic Boom and release products for both classic and modern Sonic. To say Tomy's Sonic hype was high at the time would be an understatement, and recognizing fans' excitement, Tomy Germany went to the fan site spindash.de and gave them a sneak peek at their 2017 products, through a very early look at their lineup. These images, clearly labeled confidential, showed off much of what Tomy had planned for 2017. However, a lot of it didn't end up coming out the way it was presented here. Many of the Sonic Boom items shown off were never released, though we did get our first look at the new emoji-styled plush line. What really caught people's attention, though, was this page advertising a new wave of classic Sonic plushes. Included were Sonic, Tails, Amy, and Metal Sonic. Unfortunately, the Amy and Metal Sonic plushes were never released. From what I've been told, they were cancelled because retailers such as Toys R Us at the time didn't feel confident in Sonic, after the Sonic Boom line had totally failed to live up to the sales of Jazzwares Sonic. Because of that, Tomy went back to the drawing board, and that's why classic Amy and Metal Sonic here were swapped out for modern Sonic and Metal Sonic, and the rest is history. Why do I bring all of this up? Well, this page actually clued us into the biggest Tomy Sonic leak that ever happened. If you've watched my video on the Jazzwares Big the Cat plush, you may remember an eBay seller named Anime China Tiger. Well, before they sold big to me, in November 2016, they listed a 12-inch Tails plush. Now, no 12-inch Tails had been announced yet, but this was obviously Tomy's. The touch tag matched their plushes, and it looked to be of their style, but hey, his cheek and chest tufts are pink? What's that about? Unfortunately, I actually didn't order this plush immediately. He was only around $16 from what I can remember, but for some reason I guess I didn't want to support a seller who took early stock from the factory. This was a foolish decision though, because it doesn't take a genius to realize he has pink tufts. This is clearly some sort of factory sample. I contacted some Tomy employees I knew at the time, and they confirmed with me he was a factory sample, and that the final plush would not be like that. Sadly though, by the time I got confirmation he was legit, he was taken down and the seller never relisted him. However, just a month or so later, these two showed up from the same source. An 8-inch dark blue classic Sonic plush, and a smaller Tails plush with the same pink tufts. Immediately, I realized that these two were in the same poses as what was seen on that catalog leak. This seller had somehow gotten even more Tomy samples. They also listed a 12-inch Dark Blue Classic Sonic as well. That was the first one I ordered, and he was lost in the mail. He was shipped, but he never arrived. To this day, I've never been able to find another one. But on the bright side, I did manage to find the rest. I got the smaller Classic Sonic off eBay. The seller mirrored their listings on AliExpress as well, which is where I got the smaller Tails. But by the time I wisened up, they had already sold out of the 12-inch Tails. So finding that one was complete luck. In April of 2018, someone had listed a lot of Sonic plushes on eBay. I remember the majority of it wasn't very special, but it did include this pink tail. The seller just didn't realize what they had, but the lot was an auction, and I didn't want to risk not being able to correct the mistake I made the first time by not buying him. Thankfully, the seller was very nice and I ended up getting him for relatively cheap. Now, I do know other people who also managed to get these, so I'm not the only person who has them. I do actually know several people who have that dark blue 12-inch classic Sonic. One of them even has a Sonic Boom touch tag and not the classic one, and another has a touch tag from Tomy's La Maisie line? I guess the factory just used whatever touch tags they had lying around. Maybe there's one with a Pokemon touch tag or something. I I refer to this set of leaked plushes as Tomy Sonic Collector Series Plush Wave Zero, as they all come from well before the plushes were finalized. The final plushes of course have their accurate colors, making these very unique. This seems to be something Tomy does often with their plushes, as I've also been able to find samples of some of their Pokemon plushes as well, with wildly different colors compared to what was released. To make it clear, these are technically not prototypes, but are instead factory samples made to test out the plush patterns. I remember the listing for the Small Sonic had over a hundred sold at one point. There are quite a few of these out there. Well, relative to other prototypes at least. I bet some of you watching may actually have some of these and you never realized they were special. I actually have a second of the 8-inch classic Sonic as well, but this one has unfinished stitching, meaning his hands are not properly attached like most of them. With that said, this set is definitely an interesting footnote in Tomy's Sonic history.
If you think that's all for Tomy Sonic prototypes though, we're just getting started. After seeing all these eBay leaks, I started searching on the site Taobao, the Chinese shopping site I talk so much about when it comes to these prototypes. A lot of the stock on Taobao, when it is in bootleg stock, is factory stock, meaning a lot of prototypes and samples show up. These Tomy listings are actually what inspired me to start looking at Taobao, so you can thank these guys as to why I found Kelly Toy Werehog. Around the time of those eBay listings, back in February 2017, a listing on Taobao with similar stock appeared. A lot of the Images from the listing are unfortunately lost now, but a majority of it wasn't that exciting. It was mostly just factory stock of the final plushes. I mean, they did have some of the dark blue classic Sonics, but it wasn't a lot of interesting stuff. Well, that was the case besides these. Just like the differently colored classic samples, here are some samples of the Sonic Boom emoji plushes, all done in a light blue color with yellow skin. I immediately fell in love with these guys. The emoji plushes are already super charming, but adding this pastel color scheme just makes them even better. It's a shame they were never released like this. Unfortunately, when these were listed, I had no way to import from Taobao, so they went up and sold without me buying any. However, on Taobao, there's a feature where you can review a product you bought and include a picture, which thankfully a lot of people who got these did. Shout out to the people in China who took photos like this one where Sleeping Sonic is with a sleeping Kirby, as well as this one where... What is this? Yeah, looks like this was included with the stock sold by the seller. I can imagine the buyer must have been pretty confused when this goofy boy showed up. This bandana -less Sonic is actually an even earlier prototype of the Happy Sonic plush. He has the proper colors, but you can tell his pattern isn't anywhere close to final. He's a lot rounder than the final plush, and he looks so cute. His tush tag is also completely different, saying Master Hero Sample on it. This tush tag could be found on most of the Tomy Sonic prototypes, mainly those seen at Toy Fair. Seeing one with it in the wild was crazy. Unfortunately, though, again, I didn't buy any of these. I completely missed them and it was something I regretted for well over a year. With that said, you can imagine how overjoyed I was when my guy Anime China Tiger listed these on AliExpress of all places. That's right, light blue sleeping Sonic, sad Sonic, and yes, a master hero sample of sad Sonic. They all went up around June 2018. This depressing trio ironically made me incredibly happy. I believe I found the listing the day it was posted, as they only had one in stock of the master hero Sonic but I was able to grab it, and they arrived a few weeks later. It was so cathartic to actually have these in person, especially the Master Hero Sad Sonic. We had never seen a picture of that one before, and I had one now, though the one they shipped out to me isn't actually the one from the listing photos. Mine has a final Sonic Boom tush tag and not the Master Hero one. It's slightly less cool, but I really can't complain. I may never find the light blue happier laughing Sonics, and I'll always regret not grabbing these off of Taobao when I could've, but even just having these ones is a dream come true. I I love having all these different versions of the Sad Sonic. It's like a Sad Sonic evolution. Maybe someday the ones I'm missing will show up again, but for now, who knows? In any case, you guys in China better be taking good care of them. We're almost done with Sonic prototypes, but I have one more I want to talk about today. So the story for this one is that one day I searched Sonic plush on Google, checked the recent results, and for some reason this Hungarian website showed up in the results. And on that site I found a listing for this guy. At the toy fairs, most of the plushes Tomy had on display were samples with this tush tag. Since I had followed this line so closely, a dream of mine was to get one of the plushes with this tag. While he's still really cool, the sad Sonic plush not having it was a real letdown. These tush tags are true forms of authentication, and I would have done anything to find one. Well, it turns out some random seller in Hungary had one, and of Sonic too. Getting a Master Hero prototype of any of the characters would have been great, but finding one of Sonic himself was incredible. I had to talk with the seller for a bit to convince them to ship it to America, but in the end, he arrived. This was actually the first piece I got in 2019, quite a way to start the year off. The back of his tush tag is dated October 11, 2016. That's nearly a year before the plush hit store shelves, giving us some insight on how long it took for these to get from prototype to release. This is one of my favorite items for sure, but I do have to wonder how it got into the hands of that seller in Hungary. A Chinese-made prototype of an American plush was found in Hungary, and then imported back into America. Huh. With all of that said, I think we've said enough about Sonic for today. I do have a few other Sonic prototypes, such as this one of the 2012 Sine Knuckles plush, but I have a lot more to cover, so let's move on. <laughs> 
Alright, enough Sonic. Here are some Nintendo prototypes. I don't have nearly as many as I do for Sonic, but I do have quite a few from Jax's World Nintendo line. For some reason, Jax really likes to announce things or tease things, but then never actually release them. The biggest culprits of this are their plushes of the Animal Crossing Villager Boy and Baby Blue Yoshi. Both clearly finished, but never released for one reason or another. Villager was meant to be part of the ninth wave of plushes, but was replaced with Tom Nook late into production. Right, Tom Nook. You know, a character we have plenty of plushes of already? Human villager plushes are so great and really popular, so it's a shame he'll probably never be released. Especially because this is the popular Smash Bros design of villager, originally being from City Folk. This would have been the only plush of this design. More crushing on a universal scale though was them showing off this baby blue Yoshi plush, even listing him on Amazon, and then never releasing him. He was meant to be part of Plush Wave 2-5, which was to include a running Mario, a Koopa Paratroopa, and Big Boy Season himself. For some reason, this wave never came out, and no future plush were released afterwards. I can guarantee Jax's annual profits would have quadrupled if this plush was released, but oh well, I guess Jax doesn't like happiness. He's still listed on Amazon, but he was meant to be released in spring 2018 at the latest, so at this point I don't think he'll ever be released. Rest easy, baby Yoshi. Maybe a plush of you will be released eventually. At least we got a figure of it. Speaking of figures, while I've never found prototypes of the unreleased Jax plushes, I have found some figure samples. They're all simple variants that were never released, so don't get too excited, but it seems like the fact that produces these figures did some wholesaling of their unsold stock, as multiple sellers on Taobao have listed huge lots of the figures. Most of these have sold out by now, but I managed to snag quite a few of them. Jax really likes to repurpose existing molds to produce variants, and as such they've released sets in both monochrome and gold color schemes, called the Prototype Series and Trophy Series respectively. It seems they did a number of tests for ones that never came out, as through Taobao we have found several variants that were never released. I personally have the following, Prototype Piranha Plant along with all these unpainted molds of it, Trophy Series Chain Chomp, an unpainted Deku Link, unreleased colors of Baby Yoshi, these being my favorite, they released both blue and yellow, but pink never came out, and a green one wasn't in New Super Mario Bros. U, so it's likely that one was never meant to be released at all. I also have these two different tests of a gold Luigi, one with opened hands and one with closed hands. None of those even hold a candle though to this unpainted wall Luigi I have, complete with stylish pink legs and shoes. It's absolutely the gem of my collection, though that should go without saying. I may not show it very often, but I have a very personal connection with the film and television entertainment icon known as Jimmy Neutron. From a very young age, the adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius was always one of my favorite cartoons, and the series never really slipped my mind. Unfortunately, with collecting at least, I'm focused on video game franchises, as those are the series I'm most passionate about, so I rarely collect merchandise for other mediums, such as cartoons. However, in my searchings, I've stumbled across what is quite possibly a prototype Jimmy Neutron plush. Once again, I found myself mindlessly searching Taobao. You see, searching on Taobao is quite robust, as you can do so with not just search terms, but also images. So you can throw up an image of a Sonic plush, for example, and the site will present any listing with images that look similar. It's not perfect, but it's a really nice addition. One day, I was searching for random Sonic items trying to find whatever I could, and I searched using this image of the Sega Prize Sonic X Chris Thorndike plush. And while I regret to say I did not find any long lost Chris merchandise, I did find this listing which immediately caught my attention. While I didn't recognize these three characters, I immediately recognized Jimmy Neutron. With that said though, in my time researching Jimmy Neutron merchandise, which admittedly is not nearly as vast as it should be, I've never seen a plush that looks quite like this one. Well, sorta. Okay, so one of the most famous plushes of Mr. Neutron is this backpack storybook plush. It's referred to as such due to him coming with his backpack, which has a small picture book inside of it. The book is low on substance, but sure is a fun gimmick for a toy. This plush was made by a company called Bookworks, who seemed to have made an entire line of plushes with storybooks in their attached backpacks. It's an oddly specific idea for a toy, but apparently they were successful, because they released dozens of characters. When looking at the Taobao Jimmy Neutron listing, it immediately hit me that this plush has the same backpack and book setup, but it looks completely different than the plush that was released. It also had blank pages in its backpack, and that's when it dawned on me. This Jimmy Neutron is almost certainly an earlier test of this plush. I checked the listing again, and threw the description into Google Translate, and in it, it states these plushes are original samples, almost 
outright confirming that these are indeed factory samples. To confirm it while researching bookworks, I found pictures of the plush of this character, Little Miss Muffet, who matches the plush next to Jimmy. It's all but confirmed that this Jimmy Neutron here is an earlier incarnation of what would eventually become this released plush. Apologies to the Little Miss Muffet fans watching this video, I did not grab that one, though I guess it would also be a sample. This was a huge find. I'm a lifelong fan of Jimmy Neutron, so for me, a guy who would recognize stuff like this, to find an actual prototype of a plush of that character was crazy. What luck. The description also comments on how the backpack's pages are blank, stating you can design your own pages. But I could never deface a piece of Jimmy Neutron history like that. After realizing what this plush was, I immediately placed an order, paid the $4.55 asking price, and a few weeks later, I was in possession of what could be one of the only pieces of prototype Jimmy Neutron merchandise out there. First off, this plush has no branding on it, which makes it pretty clear that this is a prototype. What surprises me about this plush, though, is that he looks really great, which is uncommon for plushes of this series. For those who don't know, the plushes based off of Jimmy Neutron are generally quite lacking. It seems like most companies had a tough time capturing Jimmy and his friends in physical form, resulting in most of the plushes looking very goofy and off-model. Very few plushes of Jimmy actually look good, which makes me very happy to say that this sample plush looks excellent. He doesn't just look good, though. If you thought this plush was already really cool, get this. His arms and legs are fully posable, which is amazing! I'm sure some of you watching have never even heard of plushes that can pose, but they do exist. Take these Chinese Sonic Adventure era Sonic plushes released in the early 2000s by the company Mac Yuka, for example. My Sonic and Knuckles are very used, but they can still pose. Aren't these just the coolest things ever? So to have a Jimmy Neutron plush with similar capabilities is so incredible. From what I know, the final plush cannot pose. So on top of looking better, this plush is a better toy in general as well. It's a shame that Bookworks had to cheapen the plush so much before its release. Another thing that stands out to me about this Jimmy is that it seems to be based off the movie design of the character, and not the design from the TV show which was used on the final plush. They're very small changes, but you can see that this plush has Jimmy in shorts and with different shoes than the final plush. This design of Jimmy was used in the movie, but never in the TV show. Early merchandise of Jimmy feature him in a variety of clothing, as merchandise often begins production prior to the finalization of a character's design. This is actually pretty fascinating, as it gives you an idea of when this plush was made in terms of the timeline of Jimmy Neutron. It makes you wonder what the specific nature of this prototype truly was. My theory is that this plush was made to pitch the idea to Nickelodeon, and the final plush was made after they had obtained the license, but they had to cheapen it to make it more cost efficient. This is a very high quality, well-designed plush, perfect for a toy line pitch. This would mean that this plush was used by Bookworks to pitch the idea to Nick. Whether this is actually true is unknown, but it would make a lot of sense for this plush to be that early, given it features Jimmy's original design. As cool as this plush is, if only it was of Johnny Quasar, Jimmy's original design from the very first piece of Jimmy Neutron animation. A plush of that design would have been an incredible discovery. Maybe a Johnny Quasar plush is somewhere out there. I mean, there's a figurine of him that exists. Anyway, the way I found this plush really goes to show how these prototypes can really appear anywhere. This random seller on Taobao just so happened to find old factory stock from the factory that made Bookworks plushes, a company I bet no one even thought about before this video. Somehow, this plush survived for decades without being destroyed or given away. All of that came together for me to find him and for him to be showcased in this video. Fate is wild, isn't it? As a huge Jimmy Neutron fan, it's incredible to have this in my collection. It almost makes me want to grab some other plushes of him to go along with it. In any case, now when it's 2am and I'm sitting alone in my bed listening to classics like Go Jimmy Jimmy and Kids in America, I can rest easy knowing I have a one-of-a-kind piece of Jimmy Neutron ephemera. One of the biggest merchandise-heavy franchises I can think of is none other than Garfield. In fact, despite originating as a comic strip, much of Garfield's relevance in the modern age comes from merchandise. Sure, there are newer incarnations of the series like the incredible live-action movies and the Garfield show, but much of Garfield's infamy is due to how nowadays, the brand heavily relies on just how recognizable it is, and makes a majority of its money through merchandise sales. In fact, in the early 1980s, Garfield's beloved creator Jim Davis founded the company Paws Incorporated a company that focuses entirely on the licensing of Garfield. That's how big the brand is. Since then, Garfield goods have become just as popular, if not more popular, than the comics themselves. There are tons of huge, impressive Garfield collections out there. There are even events where fans meet up and trade merch. It's a big deal, which is why I was interested in this eBay account, mhannaxx13. This account has existed since 1998, but recently, they listed countless Garfield items. At first, this appears to simply be a very impressive fan collection of Garfield merch, 
merchandise. Perhaps they were a longtime fan who grew out of the character and are now selling off their Garfield stash, but this is not the case. Upon further inspection, you'll notice that almost every listing here has some variation of From the Paws Inc. archives in their titles. This account was and still is selling Garfield items straight from the Paws internal collection. This is the company's actual archive of Garfield merchandise, so why are they selling it all off? This is the equivalent of if Sega was to sell off their incredible internal collection of Sonic merchandise seen in photos like these. Man, I wish that would happen, but it's so unlikely because archiving this stuff is important, especially from a business point of view. Merchandise is basically all Garfield is nowadays, so why are they splitting up this wealth of Garfield documentation and history? Well, I believe it has something to do with this. As it turns out, Paws Inc. is not what it used to be. The company was originally founded in 1981, but its headquarters officially opened in the town of Albany, Indiana in 1989, and was designed for around 60 employees. The company remained operating there for nearly 30 years, until early 2019 when the company closed its headquarters. For those worrying about Paws and Jim Davis's well-being, do not worry. The company still exists, but it no longer has 60 employees, more like 11, and they all do work from home. The truth is, there is so much existing Garfield artwork and style guides out there already, it just isn't efficient to keep a studio open for the sole purpose of creating more of what Plenty already exists of. So they closed the headquarters, which probably explains why the entire archive from the company seems to be up for grabs. With the closure of the studio, I suppose they came to the heart-wrenching decision of selling the archive off. This is a little sad. Sure, Garfield is still very much alive, but to know that this incredible official collection is being split up is sad to think about. All of these goods were together for decades, and now they're all going off on their separate ways. Seeing all of this, I just had to grab something. I just had to pledge my support to Jim Davis and his company. Since all of the account's stock comes from the internal collection, some of the items for sale were prototypes. This piqued my interest even more, and I went searching for the perfect item to buy. There was so much to choose from. One of my personal favorites was this, a huge Garfield plush that was used for display at licensing events. There are some famous photos out there of Jim Davis posing with this very plush, so this is no doubt a grail for many Garfield fans. And this account only wanted $200 for it. Everything here was priced very cheap, likely because without a studio to house it all, this stuff needed to move fast. In the end, I decided to grab these two plushes. One standard looking Garfield because it apparently uses some rejected fabric, and this one because it's of movie Garfield. And owning a prototype movie Garfield plush was an opportunity I was not going to say no to. Only a few days after placing my order, they arrived. After being touched by the lovely shipping label on the box, I opened them up and was blown away. I now had Garfield prototypes in my possession. I really love how these two plushes are so similar to one another. They're in the same odd sitting pose and are around the same size. I think I made a great choice getting these two. Their tags are what's really interesting about them though. The standard Garfield was apparently manufactured on August 23rd, 2003, while the movie Garfield was made on March 10th, 2006, showing this was clearly from the Tale of Two Kitties era. As a bonus included with the movie plush, I got this incredible movie Garfield branded wristwatch, featuring very flattering renders on it. This will now replace all other forms of time telling I own. While the plushes themselves aren't as interesting as some of the other prototypes I'm showing in this video, the context of where they came from makes owning them very worth it. To own something that was actually once part of the Paws archive is quite incredible. If there are still more prototypes on the eBay account, of which I'll link in the description, I suggest you grab some of them. You really don't want to miss owning a piece of Garfield history. For those of you who have seen my video about the Kelly Toy Werehog prototype plush, the story I'm about to tell here is quite similar. Back in March 2018, a seller on Taobao listed what seemed to be factory stock from the factory that produced Kelly Toy goods and plushes. Tons of never-before-seen designs and revisions of their products were shown off here, including the Werehog. While that seller hasn't listed any plushes for a long time, there is another seller with similar stock. Only this time it isn't of Kelly Toy stuff, but of Nanko. Nanko, sometimes known as Nanko Nancy Sales, is an amusement plush manufacturer who for decades have produced plushes plushes for arcades and carnivals, often being licensed. Their licenses over the years include Spongebob, The Simpsons, too many kids films to count, and even Sonic the Hedgehog. The seller had page upon page of Nanko factory stock, so I took a look at all of it and wouldn't you know it, these were all factory samples, complete with factory tags and everything. Their stock ranged from prototypes of series like Kung Fu Panda, Avatar The Last Airbender, Food Fight, Shrek, lots and lots of Shrek, Sesame Street, and more. I then purchased three that stood out to me, so let's take a look at them. First up is this Spongebob plush. Now, Nanko has been making Spongebob plushes for nearly the entirety of the show's run. While I can't quite pinpoint when this plush was made as there's no date on this guy, it does seem to be from the mid-2000s, as it closely resembles this release of their Spongebob plush. The plush itself is identical, but the tags are completely different. All three of the plushes I got from the seller have tush and paper tags, but those tags are all unbranded and clearly show that these plushes were meant for internal use only. There's no mention of the licenses themselves, only product numbers and dates. 
The second plush I got was this Homer Simpson plush. Well, not quite a prototype Kelly Toy Peter Griffin plush, I'll take a prototype Nanko Homer plush. This guy is special out of these three because his tush tag actually has writing on it. The final plush I ordered, and my personal favorite, is this plush from Nanko's line of plushes based off of the critically acclaimed film Madagascar Escape to Africa. At first glance, you may erroneously think this is a plush of the more commonly plushed character Gloria, but you couldn't be further from the truth. No, you better believe it when I say that this is actually a prototype plush of Moto Moto. First off, I'd like to say just thanks to Nanko for making an arcade plush of Moto Moto, because that's what the world really needed. As far as I know, there are three different plushes of this character, with the Nanko one being the best. He has a face that screams Moto Moto and is posed flexing, quite an accurate pose for the character. It is honestly downright beautiful to see a prototype of one of the most slept on plushes in history. To say it's a dream come true to own Proto Proto over here is an understatement. Welcome to the collection Moto Moto, hope you enjoy your stay. Now all three of these plushes were released, so it's not like this Moto Moto is the werehog of Madagascar plushes or anything, but even still, owning these is a fascinating glimpse at something we rarely get to see. These guys are straight from from the factory, complete with their factory tags. Companies usually put universal tags like these on their samples, much like what we saw with the Master Hero tag on Tomy's Sonic prototypes. The paper tags on these show the logo for Tom's Toy International Limited, which actually turns out to be a factory in Hong Kong. That factory must be where these were produced. The back of the tags have internal product info and the size of the plush. The tush tags as I said have no licensing info on it, only showing the Nanko logo, with the back having product info. Unfortunately, none of these guys are dated, so we have no idea when exactly they were produced. Produced. But hey, at least we know the factory. Before I wrap up here, there's one more Nanko prototype I have to show, but this one didn't come from Taobao. In 2012, Nanko introduced their line of Sonic the Hedgehog plushes, taking the reins from Kelly Toy. Unfortunately though, their set of plushes was very lacking in terms of both variety and quality, especially compared to those that came before it. Nanko only ever released four characters during their run on Sonic, starting out with Sonic Shadow and Tails and eventually introducing Knuckles. They did have a fifth character planned however, who was shown off in their 2012 catalog. Unfortunately, I cannot find copies of this catalog page in higher quality, but Nanko did actually create and show off a plush of Amy Rose, and she looked pretty good. Unfortunately, as is all too common, she was never released, and we never got to see her in full. Until now. Yeah, okay. I wish I got this Amy plush, but no, all I've got is this giant 26 inch prototype tails. Okay, here's the story behind this, uh beast. And this guy comes from eBay of all places, originally being listed for $300. He never sold. I messaged the seller and explained who I was and told him that while I can't pay $300, if it never sells, I'll pay 50 bucks, given how weird it looks. He never ended up selling for a higher price. I can only wonder why. So now he's part of my prototype collection. He's, um, interesting? Well, he certainly looks different than the final plush, but it's still Nanko Tails, who was probably the worst plush in their set. At least Knuckles is charmingly strange, Tails is just genuinely pretty bad. So to have this guy at such a large scale is honestly not the greatest thing, but man, it sure makes for an interesting piece. My favorite part about him is his mouth, which is to the side, something we haven't seen on Tails merch since the Sonic X days. His tush tag is similar to the Taobao prototypes, only this time having actual writing on it. Unfortunately, it seems like this Tails plush has been played with in the past, so the tush tag is quite frayed. You can still make out some details like the 26 inch size, the name of Tail, how the plush was not intended for retail sale, and curiously that it comes from Chelsea, Massachusetts, which is where the Nancy Sales headquarters is located. This is interesting because the eBay seller shipped Tails from Haverville, Massachusetts, which is close by Chelsea. It also turns out that this guy was found in the thrift store, possibly Goodwill. My guess is that a Nanko employee took this plush home, their kids played with it for a bit explaining the used tag, and then they gave it away to the thrift store, where it was then purchased by the eBay seller and sold to me. It makes you wonder how many other prototypes have found their way to thrift stores. Many companies have a rule where if an employee keeps a prototype, they cannot profit off it. So I'm sure many were given away like this. I'm sure many people find stuff like this at a thrift store and don't even suspect them to be prototypes. Hopefully more prototypes like this guy are found and identified at thrift stores in the future. While I've shown off plenty of very cool prototype and sample items in this video, there are still so many we've never seen in full. Unreleased items that were once announced but then never realized. Along with collecting merchandise, I'm interested in lots of media in general, including unreleased media. Lost media is a big interest of mine. I've often seen people say undocumented merchandise cannot be considered lost media, as they are physical items and not truly media. I suppose if you want to be technical that's true, but the same methods and principles of lost media searching are easily applicable to unreleased or rare pieces of merchandise. Perhaps in 
the future I'll make a video on the subject of lost merchandise as a whole. Because with cancelled items, so much work, passion, and talent is completely erased. And as someone who cares so much about these toy lines, that is heartbreaking to me. At the very least, I am so proud to say I own the prototypes I do. It's so funny how there are so many pieces of official merchandise that still escape me, yet I've been able to get so many of these one-of-a-kind pieces. I'm so happy I get to show them off in ways like this video. Gotta let their legacies live on. I guess all we can do is just hope that in the future more prototypes show up online, whether they be from former employees or factory workers. At the end of the day, you can't save everything, but it's clear that these prototypes deserve to be treated as the one-of-a-kind historical pieces they are.